earlier today, I heard about 10-year-old Vincent. He's a fan from Texas who wanted to meet me. And after hearing his story, I think I may be more excited to meet him. So from Cibolo, Texas, please welcome Vincent and his parents, Andy and Nicole. <laughs> Looking forward to meeting you. Um, <laughs> Can I interrupt you for a second? I just need to take this opportunity to just, I can't believe we're meeting you. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you get to hear our story and just really, we're so excited. I never thought we'd ever be in a position like this, sitting <laughs> across from Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Can you believe it? Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, I honestly, when I, when I heard that we were gonna meet, I was like, oh my God, it's like, and, and my friends are on the show and it's fun to do the show, but, um, but this was, this really, <laughs> this really grabbed me. So um, first I have a few questions. Of course. Uh, of course. For y'all, you're 10 now, yes. uh, had lost the ability to speak when he was one, and then what happened when he was four? Um, well, we had a lot of red flags that um, kind of cropped up. So just behavioral. Um... His imagination play. Yeah. Uh, he would just line stuff up. He would just spin things for countless of hours. Totally. Yeah. And so um, after consulting with family members, I have a nephew on the spectrum as well. And um, my sister-in-law actually pushed for us to have him tested for autism. Excellent. And got a confirmed diagnosis. Wow. Um, everybody here can relate to that sense of wanting to communicate and not being able to. What did that feel like? What was your experience of it that? It was painful. Yeah. 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 And it was really painful for him. Uh, now that he has a voice, I go back and I ask him. Yeah. Hey, tell me about what you were thinking that day or tell me about this time. And yeah. some of the things he talks about is not being able to, you know, make friends back then. Oh, sure. Uh, having uh, the ability not to, uh, you know, to tell us what's going on in his life. And then... Uh, when you were six, something happened? We, what, yes, what, what? I, got, I got an Iron Man helmet. And what'd that do for you? It helped me talk and imagination play. Yeah. Wow. Yes. So it's almost like the mask provided a sense of... Yes. It grounded him and yep. it allowed him to feel confident. And within 24 hours, Robert, we saw a different child. Wow. It was, uh, <laughs> Look at him! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that was, that was night one. And, and, and see, for me, too, it, it's, it's so wild in playing this character. There's something, I think, for all of us where when you're able to wear a mask, whether you're doing theater in school or Halloween or whatever, I had a particular affinity. <laughs> you and I both did with this <laughs> same mask for some reason, and it gave us a voice. And why do you, why do you think it helped? Yeah. Why do you think it, it helped? It helped me talk. No, it helped me hide my identity wow. from the world. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, you're a ringer. There you go. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> yeah. This is absolutely bananas. Look at that. <laughs> Dude, give me another high five. It's like with the same I cannot believe this. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I, I, this might have gone too far. Is it or is it? What is your dog's name? Mr. Stark. <laughs> we thought we needed one. There he is. And there he is. Oh my gosh. And if you'll notice the collar, it's collar. Iron Man. It's got an Iron Man collar. And it has the arc reactor, and wow. then his little name tag says Mr. Stark. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we, we love you. We love Iron Man. We oh, love Marvel. I love you too. I just, I just, uh, people always say, what will you miss most about having played this part? And it honestly is being able to talk to moms and dads yep. and, and young folks and, and say how somehow or other this had a positive impact on you and it just makes all these last years of working on it worthwhile. I cannot thank you enough. I thank you. Ah, thank you. And, um, and I know that there's lots of uh, expenses for therapy and tutors and Shutterfly is this amazing company and they like helping people exactly like you. Right. So they're giving your family 20 grand. 20,000.
And uh, I cannot thank you. <laughs> Did it! <laughs> Who had the most uncomfortable costume? I feel like Tom's costume was really, really bad. Tom Hiddleston, Tom who plays Loki. Yes, Loki perhaps. He wears like an entire other, there's like a whole crane yes. on top of his head, like a whole If giant... you don't recall him, he's the one that uh, Tony calls uh, reindeer games. Yeah. So he has something really, really heavy that he's got to balance? I think that thing was like 20 pounds or something. It was just this right. massive headpiece that he wears. And yeah, look at it. Look how it's oh, crazy. Yeah. And it really went like far back. I mean, you just could not stand behind him at craft service. It was a bad idea. It was right. like, Liability, and but who had the, the the one that was the hardest to get out of, to like to go to the restroom? Um, I think I think Chris Hemsworth was like, wasn't he bolted into his? I feel like perhaps. But when you're in your entire situation, you can't do anything. Correct. Yeah. So I would say probably his has got to be the worst. Oh, probably. <laughs> You weren't sure there for a minute, Well, were you? see, every time I look at you, you're wearing a Black Sabbath t-shirt, and then all of a sudden, okay. like, I forget all the work that you have to do yes. outside. Well, of... I've done a bunch of these movies, so every time we do a new one, I say, do I really have to wear it? Right. Can't you just <laughs> paint it on later? Yeah. They, they, no. they can do so much yes. with CGI now. And now, what? but when you fell, they said you can't, if you go to fall, you can't put your arms out, you'd break your arms? Correct. Why is that? Because yeah. uh, you, you'd be locked into the suit, and then the suit would kind of be okay, and your arms would break inside it. Can you imagine the idea? You, you're thinking about falling, and so instead you go. <laughs> <laughs> and did that happen? Not to me, but to one of the stunt guys it did. I felt like it happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a funny feeling in my ficus, which means it is time to play America's favorite game, Who's in My Bushes? <laughs> been a celebrity hiding in my bushes for the entire hour. I am going to ask some questions and see if I can figure out who it is. If you were a type of cookie, what type would you be? Um, Entenmann's Milano. Ah. Do you act, sing, or play an instrument? Yes, all three. Okay. Um, have you ever been in my bushes before? First time, dear. Do you have a highly anticipated movie opening next Friday? Yes. <laughs> Junior Mints or Jujubees? Junior Mints. I have it. Are you Robert Downey Jr.? Yes, dear. <laughs> the article in Vanity Fair, and really your story is, I'm a huge fan anyway, you're just crazy talented in like every area. You sing, you dance, you act, uh, you do it all. You were amazing in Chaplin, amazing. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope more people <laughs> go back and see that. Really, you were brilliant. And, and to think of your story of how successful you were young, and then went through, let's say, a rocky period. Yep. OK? And then to actually accomplish what you've accomplished, do you think about that? Do you reflect on that often? Or do you just kind of, uh, life is just what it is now? Um, well, I mean, I certainly prefer this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And by the way, Ellen knew me a little bit when. We'll talk about that afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just so nice. I think the, the simple truth is, if you just do what you're supposed to be doing anyway, your life turns out a lot better than it is if you're out there, you know, being crazy. Right. Thinking you have some kind of better idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, had, I had plans and designs, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really amazing, because your, your life has turned out to be so, uh, so positive. And a lot of people, as you know, I mean, you, you tried to get clean and, and people fall back into it. But you've managed to stay um, not only clean, but like just you are firing it all on all cylinders. I Thank mean, you, you really honor. are doing your best work you've ever done. Well. So congratulations. <laughs> And to be able to do, and I'll keep saying Chaplin over and over again, because I just thought you were so amazing in it, and it's so completely different than Iron Man. I mean, I think Iron Man turns out to be a movie that would be the biggest surprise if that would be 
a, a huge part of your career, right? Right. Um, and yet, for some reason or other, I just felt like I really can play this guy and I really understand it. And then, you know, it's always about who you work with. And John Favreau, uh, you know, had this great movie, Chef, come out this year and has done so much great stuff. Um, it was really our partnership with it. So I think it's oftentimes about just getting with the right people at the right time. Mm -hmm. And and you got in amazing shape for Iron Man. That I did. Uh huh. And do you continue that? You still do all. Well, your... I was also younger then. Uh, are you doing? Were you in karate or something? What were you doing? Uh, I still do. I still do kung fu. It's been about ten years. I, I do everything. But here's the thing: I have to take five pounds from here and put it back on my shoulders. Uh huh. That's what I have to do. Okay. Well. Okay. If anyone can do it, you can do it. Thank you, dear. I think you can. Thank you. Will there be? A... I'll do it for you. Uh, Robert's going to uh, hold up a picture of a famous dog above his head. I'm going to try to get him to guess the name of the dog, and we're going to see how many he can get right in 60 seconds, all right? Yeah. You're going to hold one of those uh, up over and over again until, uh, and I, I don't even know what this is. So, all right. Ready? Yeah. Go. Uh, oh, what's that, boy? Somebody stuck in a canyon with Diane Cannon? With a, somebody? Underdog. Mm. <laughs> Wow, you're sure a pretty collie. Lassie? Yeah. <laughs> I love, uh, sorry, uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See how honest I've become? Yeah, that's great. Uh, hey, uh, listen. Uh, wow, you, uh, this is going great. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, uh, the, uh, what about the Red Baron and I? Snoopy. Uh, yes. Yeah, sir. <laughs> OK, yeah. Yeah. Tell me the magic squirrel. Uh, uh, I'm going to call Dr. Dre, and he and I are going to go. Snoop Dogg? Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, little fella, come here. <laughs> uh, Underdog? He's, <laughs> he's small and furry, and he was in a movie, and it's just, it's uh, Benji? I got one, because I, uh, look, uh, sorry. It's all right. They weren't, they weren't penalizing you. Old Yeller, I wouldn't have known what to say for that. Can I keep these? Yes, take Thank them all. Thank you. <laughs> um, what did I not miss? Uh, uh, that would have been good. And I, I wouldn't have known her, her dog's name <laughs> at all. Would you? No. I didn't know that. Alf is not Alf a dog. Alf would have been fun. Is Alf a dog? <laughs> it's like an anteater or something. We're back with Rami Malek, and we're going to play a little trivia game inspired by our movie, Do Little. Yes. It's called Do You Know a Little or Do You Know a Lot? <laughs> Twitch and I are getting along famously now, and uh, we're going to take turns asking each of us a trivia question. He will. As soon as he's done, the balloon in front of us will start filling up. Mm -hmm. When you know the answer, you press the button. Uh, to, to keep it from filling, and if we get the answer wrong, the balloon will keep filling. If we don't know it, we get a three-second penalty, and it goes Ooh. to the other person. Whoever's balloon pops first is the loser. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, here we go. Rami, you'll go first. All right. All right. What Arctic animal is associated with Coca-Cola? Okay. Oh. Ah. <laughs> it's a panda. Is it not? Uh, it is not. Do I get to go? That's a, it's a polar bear. It's a polar bear. It's a polar bear. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sorry, everyone. She's popped out. <laughs> it's OK. The game is not over. I still have a shot. All right, Robert. Yep. Judy Dench, Taylor Swift, and Jennifer Hudson just starred in what movie musical? Cats! Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. Is there a penalty for screaming the answer yeah, no. as I hit the button? <laughs> Give me a little something. It's all right. There we go. Oh, you got, okay. <laughs> all right, Rami. Yes. What's the biggest living mammal? Blue whale. Yes. Is it blue whale? All right. Okay. I'm coming right. for you. God dang it. Just got real. Robert. Uh huh. What food do the dogs share in Lady and the Tramp? In Lady, I don't know. No. Okay. It's. Do I say it? I don't know it. It's spaghetti and meatballs oh, and a course. noodle. It's all right. Redemption. Here we go. All right, Rami. 
Yes. What animal does Ellen play in Finding Dory? Um, it is, uh, it's a fish, of course. It is a fish. I believe it is called, what is it, it's a blue tang? A blue tang, yes. I am redeeming myself. Okay. Rob, you might be in trouble, man. Right. Okay. How many more do we have left? Just uh... 40. All right. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Not much. Robert, what is a blue footed booby? You gotta be kidding me. It's a uh, blue footed booby. Yeah. It's a uh, kind of uh, a. It's a. It's a. It's a. I still got a little time. Yes. <laughs> Look, this is, uh, did I lose? You lost, man. Fair yeah, and square? Yep, yeah, that's it. Come here. Rami, you love you.